Tough times, as is all too evident in the marketplace in Lagos. But Lagos is not the only place with these challenges of capital and patronage. Over in Ogun, Imu, and Kaduna states, the story is sometimes the same, and sometimes strategies take on a different form. Jeremiah sells phone accessories at Kuto Market in Abeokuta, the Ogun state capital in southwest Nigeria. He's glad to have this space for business, even though authorities here have a creative way of getting taxes paid. This year, they come and found us out that we, we should come and pay for the office, or we, if you then come here, the thing will be double. I will state their taxes uh, is not as I like it because it's not much as a uh, Edo state because I'm living at Edo before. So the tax I'm paying there because that place, the Agboro, their water is too much. Like uh, Edo state, I'm, I'm living at, uh, I'm selling at uh, New Bini Market and Selu Market. So at Linglo, there, their tax, uh, everything, they are much. Because sometimes we used to fight with them, and uh, because not they will not come with uh, uniform. Some used to come with uh, our earlier boys. Tetlo Inoweri, the capital of Imo State in southeast Nigeria, is known for its dense population of small businesses. In this shop, mobile phone repairs take place. They say they can get the phones to look almost as good as new. Everest, who is a stakeholder in this shop, as well as his counterparts in other shops, is fed up with conditions he's still trying to understand. Sometimes we even uh, incur uh, double transaction. Local governments will come and uh, give us their own task. Uh, the state government will also come and give us their own task. We spent uh, Almost 1,500 naira daily on fuel, you know, in generating the power. At a time, we don't even know the right people to pay. So these are one of the problems we have here. Most of them are not affordable. They come, look into your shop, give you any amount they like. No, no standard on tax collection here. Uh, there are many of them, projection, sanitation um, and other uh, tax. There are many of them. They have had to take a cut in sales because buyers are occupied with other things. Uh, we're supposed to uh, be selling more than uh, we used to sell in a normal season. But uh, this s I mean, it seems to be a different one. We are seeing nothing. We are having low sales because People are concentrating in household um, clothes and other things than computer because we are in festive period. Taxes are being paid, but they don't feel safe. We need security around this place because most times uh, you see some group of boys will come to a shop and harass somebody and leave without no challenge. So uh, I'm not happy about that. In Kaduna, the Kaduna state capital, northwest Nigeria, Abiola owns a not so small printing business. He has several employees. Abiola is of the opinion that his taxes are not inflated and praises the state government for cutting out bogus taxation. His only grouse is that he has to pay separate taxes for his other outlets. I think it's still fair, presently. Before we used to have different people that will come and tell you, you must pay for this. In fact, if you want to place your generator outside, some people will come and tell you, you must pay for placement of generator. But presently, that is not happening again. Based on the taxes we are paying, I think it's still fair. It's still fair. It's not too difficult on us. I only do my national task clearance. You understand? Cardinal State, I, there is no special uh, tax we pay to Cardinal State. 
except the local government tax that will pay. We'll pay local government uh, with the business permit or whatever I have. They call it business permits. So the, it's going to be charged based on the size of your business. And the, like me, we here, we have about three to four locations. So we pay for each of these locations. So the only, that is the only way I have challenge with them. He wonders, though, how proprietors of smaller businesses make ends meet. If you see any small businessman or any small organization coping and surviving with the trend of things as it is in Nigeria now, they are struggling to survive. A lot of challenges are facing SMEs. One, capital. According to the Financial System Strategy 2020, MSMEs suffer huge gaps in infrastructure, poor financial support and credit environment, high levels of unskilled workforce, and low investment commitment to bring pilot plants to commercial scale. SMEs may be the engine of an economy, but the engine would certainly stop if it is not serviced properly. And to grow the economy, micro, small and medium businesses must be grown over a period of time. They are small businesses, so you can, you can measure my turnover from my... Mr. Bayo Ugunusi, the SME analyst, says Nigerians must change their methods of handling small businesses. According to him, if they are to survive and scale up, they must be nurtured. He advocates an initial nurturing period of three years. The only way the SMEs or the SME in, in, in a country can grow is if there is movement from this micro to the small, like a graduation sort of, uh, from the small to the, to the medium and from the medium to the enterprise. If, if I'm a small business and I have issues, financial challenges, and you give me money, I will not use the money to solve my financial challenges in the business. I will solve my personal financial challenges first. So I have rent to pay, and you invest, and you give me 10 million. I'll pay my rent, pay my children's school fees. I'll sort out my issues before facing the business. So what, what you see is that that growth is taunted again. Nobody starts a business uh, and waits for two, three years before I start making money. No, nobody does that. You go to meet your uncle, I want to start a business. He's like, so how much are you going to make? Say, uncle, um, by 2023 20, or 2022, I will bring dividend. It will change, it won't, call, it won't pick your call again. We don't have that patience. Because of that nature, Nigeria has been boxed into a short-term thinking that anything I do, don't let it be more than four years. And what would one survive on in the three-year waiting period, one might ask? Experts assure us that this incubation period is perhaps one of the most trying, yet most crucial times to understand the character and dynamics of the business. A time to follow a carefully made business plan where the numbers have been analyzed. Numbers which include capital, expenses and taxes. He has an example from one of his experiences. I was talking to one guy, he's a baba. I gave him like 20 businesses he could do with 100,000. He was like, ha, ah, he didn't know this. I told him, what account do you use for this business? He said, his account. I said, no, go open, go open a business account. Let the money from this business be going to that account. Say, how would I, how would I eat? I said, very easy. You sell, you say he does about 80K every week. I remember, 80K every week. From Babin Saloon. So in a month, you do about... Three, eight times four, three twenty k. How much do you spend a month? Yeah, I know they spend five fifty k. Maybe we can just buy Richard car, buy this, buy that. Say no problem. Pay yourself that fifty k, fifty k salary. Go and buy the next set of clippers and keep them. Next month, you make another two hundred k. Go and deposit for another shop. That's growth. So instead of you seeing that two hundred fifty k, ah, money has come. Next, as will be, don't see it from that point of view. Deny yourself, delay gratification. Then in six months, you have opened like four shops. And you employ people. You have empowered people. Then begin diversify. You do barbing. Bring hairstyling for women. It seems starting might be easy, but sustaining the business is where the work is. That's all on Big Story. Thanks for watching. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.